When you know that you are queer, but your favorite drink is beer, that's gayish. You can bottom without stopping, but you can't stop going shopping, that's gayish. Oh, gayish, you're probably gayish. Well, life's just too short for narrow stereotypes, so oh, it's gayish. We're also gayish. It's gayish with Mike and Kyle. Hello, everyone in the podcast universe. This is gayish. The podcast that's a bottom feeder. <laughs> <laughs> suck my dick <laughs> give me your bottoms so i may feed upon them <laughs> i'm mike johnson i am the the bottom feeding temple of doom i'm kyle gets uh we're here to bridge the gap between sexuality and actuality and today we're going to talk about queer. We're going to talk about queer, but uh, happy Pride Month. Month, Mike. <laughs> so I, I called you month, I think. Um, happy happy Pride, Mike. Happy Pride, Kyle. Um, yeah, it's Pride. It's Pride. So for Pride, here at Gayish, we usually do a, a something, a, some kind of something for Pride. We try to, we try to deno- recognize the event, the We try to be gay. We try to be gay. We try to be <laughs> queer. Yeah. Um, so this month for Pride, for the month of June, all of our episodes are going to have something to do with the word queer. And uh, in addition to that, you are all invited to a super special happy hour on Thursday, June the 23rd at 6 p.m. Pacific. We are going to send out a Zoom link and publish it on all of our socials and, and whatnot and just have a... Have a happy pride, everybody. Let's let's have a cocktail. Yeah, yeah. Or your sober beverage of choice. Um, I we know from our listeners that I mean, part of the entire thing of talking about stereotypes and talking about ways we don't always feel like we fit in with the community, um, is that we know people, you know, for whatever reason, may not have a community whether they're not out whether they don't live in a place that's supportive where they don't live with a family that's supportive whether they just don't have friends in whatever area like whatever the reason is we know a lot of our listeners are in this place where they don't feel like they can be connected to uh, an lgbt community or event and especially during pride that that can be particularly isolating so uh we thought this would i mean it's always fun to get together with other listeners and actually get to like chat and hang out. And, you know, especially during pride, we thought that was a perfect time. Yeah. And it's going to be clothing optional. Oh God. That's (laughs) no, it's not. (laughs) Well, you you have to, you have to wear clothes for at least the part where Kyle and I are there. I was just thinking, I mean, like it is a no nudity, like don't be nude, but I guess if you're shirtless from the, and your camera is, I don't know. I don't need to get it. Do, wear clothes, everybody. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Join us. Again, that is going to be uh, June 23rd at 6 p.m. Pacific. Um, yeah. Before we hop into the news, feedback and corrections. Just uh, a, a person sent in the kind of pedantic shit that I fucking love. So I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to throw it out there real quick. So Google Glass is the device that you wore on your head that put the, the, the glass in. It, the glasses that had the shit on it that's technically augmented reality which is a subset of virtual reality but the thing that we were talking about and i don't know if i said it or not is google cardboard which was where you stick your phone into this cardboard box and put it up to your face and it was a a virtual reality fully immersed experience and i we definitely i definitely confused the two or conflated the two so mm. um yeah that's it. Google Glass and Google Cardboard. Yeah, there are three people that are like very relieved today. Yeah, they're like they finally got it. I'm one of them, but that's just because I shit my pants. <laughs> uh, okay, um, <laughs> is it time for the news? It's time for the news. Shut your mouth hole. It's time for your ear holes. News, news, news. All right, news. The first. A Virginia man has been acquitted of murder this week after using what amounted to the gay panic defense, gay slash trans panic defense. Uh, Now, so a jury on Friday found that former Virginia Tech football player Isamemen Itute, 19, is not guilty of second degree murder in the beating death of Jerry Paul Smith. 
It was in Montgomery County Circuit Court in Christianburg, Virginia. Uh, Smith, who was 40, had had a sexual encounter with Etute in Smith's uh, apartment in Blacksburg, Virginia. Uh, They met on Tinder, and Etute believed that Smith was a woman named Angie. Smith performed oral sex on Etute when they hooked up on April 10th of 2021, with Etute still believing that Smith was a woman. It is unknown if Smith identified as trans. His family said he was a gay man. Uh, Etute returned to Smith's home on May 31st, 2021, with the intention of determining Smith's gender. He realized Smith was a man, became enraged, and then beat him to death. I know you think about these things. You are you are saying, like, male and and pronouns for for male yeah i suppose i could say they the thing is that the thing is this person is dead we don't know what this person's pronouns are Uh, he was presenting as a woman when he had these sexual encounters with the guy that killed him hit them her i but uh it's the, the fact that and then the family says well he was a gay man that says like they're down with him being gay, but not with trans. Maybe like I just it's very difficult to know. And there's no way to find out because this person is dead. Well, but like nowadays, like you have social media, like didn't did they have their pronouns there? They have friends like there there are ways to identify uh, someone's, you know, if they identified as trans or, or what their pronouns were even after they have died. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, yeah, I, I get that. I agree with that. And um, this is this is the advocate that I'm getting this news story mm. from. And I think that they would have reported on it definitively if those facts were available. Yeah. Like the yeah, advocate it, itself says it's unknown if he identified as transgender and uses he him pronouns okay. to to identify the victim. But it's it's a great point. And yeah. like, I, you know. Yeah. I, I mean, I yeah. The the advocate like we we are not investigative journalists like we uh, we, we got to trust our our known gay publications. So um, the advocate, you know, sh- should be one that, that we were able to trust. Also, like then it confuses me on like, I don't know, you can wear a dress and still identify as male. So like it's yep. not that you're I don't know. It, anyway. Just want I that that is something like we should especially in this story absolutely make sure like we clarify where we're like getting pronouns and shit. Yep, yep, yep. Well, okay, so so basically, there is there's a couple of things about this story that I that I want to that I want to throw throw out there. One is that the gay panic defense actually is outlawed in the state of Virginia. But that law went into effect a month after this incident. So in this case, the gay panic defense is still legally technically okay because that law had not gone into effect yet, which hinges on this bullshit idea that like, oh, well, there's a there's there's no gay panic defense anymore in this state. I'm not going to murder that person. I don't think (laughs) I don't think that's how people think or behave. Yeah, but 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 uh um and it's such ahead. bullshit that uh, i get there someone is going to have to walk into a courtroom with technicalities and all of these things so i understand but the the idea of trying to identify what state and where the gay or trans panic defense is legal to decide if that's going to play a role in defending a murderer is fucking insane and it it just pisses me off that we have to think like, oh, it, wait, do they think it's OK or slightly better if they kill someone when they're trans? Like, OK, wait, when did they say it was uh, like worse to kill or, or it was as bad to kill us as everyone else? Like, oh, oh, sorry. Last month, it was a little bit better to kill us than this. Month. It's just so fucking insane that those technicalities like that, that that's even an option. That's even a thing that not enough people know that these everyone just assumes that gay people are all equal and we're all fine. I don't know. It's right. Frustrating. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Well, so, so the, the other thing is then gay panic defense or not, a lot of the defense's case hinged on uh, Smith, this person, the, 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 the victim um, was so much older that that Etute was only nineteen, and so they painted him as a predator who was, mm-hmm. you know, trying to fool this young impressionable man into believing that he was a woman, and 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 that him 
presenting one way when in these sexual encounters, but then presenting another way to his family somehow constituted some moral failing on Mm. his part. And, and so it it just, that allowed them to then say after the fact, well, no, it wasn't the gay panic defense. It was because this dude was a a liar and that somehow made it okay to kill him. I don't, I just don't fucking understand it, but, but, um, uh, it, it's, uh, it, it's it's complicated. However, I do want to point out there is no federal law that bans a gay panic defense. So it is state by state. Gay panic defense is only banned in California, Colorado, Connecticut, Florida, Georgia, Hawaii, Illinois, Iowa, Maine, Maryland, Massachusetts, Minnesota, Nebraska, Nevada, New Hampshire, New Jersey, New Mexico, New York, Oregon, Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, Texas, surprisingly, Vermont, oh. Virginia, Washington, the District of Columbia, and Wisconsin. That's 27. So that means the gay panic defense is still legal in 24 states. And does the, I assume the trans panic defense is far fewer. Like, do those have different? That is a good question. Thank you so much. And I do not know the answer to that. Because this table that I'm reading from is just, it says, is labeled gay and trans panic defense. So I don't, I don't have that separated out. Don't kill people, everybody. Okay. Uh, news the second? No. What? I like uh, the, the, I don't know, the, the idea of your sexual experience, then you look back and you're like, oh no, this, because of something I retroactively learn about you, now this infuriates me. Or, like, uh, that's an, a, a direct and specific byproduct of homophobic and transphobic and talk toxic masculinity culture yeah. that we have created like so many people have a negative reaction based on what not their actual experience but based on the expectations of them or uh, it has nothing to do with whether they enjoyed themselves whether it was consensual whether they like because I don't, yeah it's just like oh i shouldn't like a thing yeah or i i shouldn't like a person and um yeah it's it's yeah it yep. sucks yep i get it and, and and in this case uh they they said that itute you know had like something tipped him off and he had a suspicion that smith was um was was a man and and then sought him out to prove it and so it's it's not like it was a heat of the moment thing. It was it was it was premeditated. Like he went over there that time because he was like, I'm going to find out what your gender is. Mm. <laughs> and mm. uh, it's anyway. Yeah. OK, we can move on. OK, news. The second Marjorie Taylor Greene is just I I just she's a never ending smorgasbord of crazy. So. U.S. Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene has Marjorie Taylor Green has uh, started peddling this idea that the mass shooter in the Uvalde, Texas school shooting was trans or at least gender nonconforming, and and has also claimed that there's a plot to turn everyone gay or trans, and that straight people face extinction in this country. Okay, well that part's true. Okay, <laughs> you know, we try to be fair on this show. We are definitely aiming for the swift extinction of straight cis people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Um, so maybe she's not all crazy. We the gay agenda is happening. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, yeah. So so she. She said that the gunman who killed 19 students and two teachers, quote, had a lot of mental issues going on, as was shown with him wearing eyeliner, cross-dressing, a lot of his language, being a loner. And uh, another Republican member of Congress, Paul Gosser of Arizona, tweeted last week that the shooter was, quote, a transsexual leftist illegal alien, which I, okay. Wow. Sure. And, and then, uh. Uh, yeah, about the like extinction of straight people. Quote: They just want you to think that all of a sudden the entire population is steadily turning gay or turning trans. Just generation, generation, generation. Probably in about four or five generations, no one will be straight anymore. Everyone will either be gay or trans or nonconforming or whatever the list of fifty or sixty different options there are. And and in that world, man, we shit marshmallows and lay on beds of clouds and and just we all hug. It's like. Trans people 
had nothing to do with why do you like yeah they have nothing to do with this new story they are boy they're really leaning hard because they know how divisive this is unfortunately and they're really leaning hard into it so yep but if you are a white dude <laughs> right especially a cis white dude yeah. no one talks about that identity that identity is totally fine in spite of like very i think it's the fbi that was like domestic terrorism by white nationalist people is yeah. like one of the biggest threats to the u.s like yep. every identity they're so fucking worried about except the actual group of people that are causing the most harm yep absolutely i love uh, uh, yes yes Great. I, f I feel validated. We can move on. Uh, okay. <laughs> she. <laughs> uh, I did. I, sorry. That sounded super sh condescending. I, I meant, I get it. I get what you're doing. And we can, I didn't mean to be rude. No, no, no. It, I, okay. It's rude and hilarious, which, okay. you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, let's really uh, break this down together right now in the middle of this news story together. <laughs> okay. We just got done telling a candidate for fucking Dan's old job in an interview that we don't fight. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, that was, we lie during those entire things. Yeah. Um, uh, she, she makes some very, very funny miss misstatements sometimes and it just goes to show like i will make fun of her for being stupid <laughs> i will make fun of other people for being stupid in my head <laughs> but not say it but um like because people anyway she just fucking stupid she she once recently was talking about the left-wing gazpacho she meant <laughs> gestapo which is the nazi military police uh, political police uh, but gazpacho is a, a soup right <laughs> um but then uh, in this rant about the gunman being being trans or gender nonconforming or whatever, she said, quote, the government totally wants to provide surveillance on every part of your life. They want to know when you're eating. They want to know if you're eating a cheeseburger, which is very bad because Bill Gates wants you to eat his fake meat, which is grown in a peach tree dish. <laughs> peach tree dish is hilarious, Kyle. I, I've not heard that one before. <sighs> There's, but like, okay, mm -hmm. I get it's fun and funny to make fun of that shit, but also we all do that stuff. And like, I, I don't want to humanize her. I don't want to, I don't want it to be like, oh, she's one of us. She makes mistakes. I don't know. That's not the, I don't know. I want to stay mad at the real things, you know? I get that. Yeah. Yeah. That's valid. I'm with you. I hear I'm validating you again. Oh my god, I feel so valid this episode. <laughs> oh god, I just... Do they have a peach tree dish in Call Me By Your Name? Because they should have. <laughs> Sorry, what were you saying? I don't know what I'm saying. I mm. just... Yeah. I want to be... I want to have our best and brightest be the people that represent us and make decisions. And so... When there's somebody who thinks that they're a fucking epidemiologist, doesn't know what a fucking Petri dish is, it just, <laughs> it really, it really bothers me. Okay. I do enjoy that comparison of like, if you're trying to make statements about a virus in your opinions about a virus, I, I like that compare and contrast between peach tree dish and trying to make claims about COVID. The, mm -hmm. the, that, that then says you said a dumb thing and that's fine we all do but i also don't make policy about any kind of like covid or widespread disease or what have you although yep. we do talk about it some should we take a class never mind <laughs> we can talk <laughs> again this is another note to talk about later uh news the third news great. the last great this is my favorite news story of the week stephen bates who is a newly elected gay member of parliament in Australia in a district in Brisbane Ooh. contributes his election success to quote a vivacious grinder ad campaign. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. He hosted several risque ads on the queer dating and hookup app with attention grabbing slogans. One of them says just it's his it's his, it's him being adorable looking all like official uh and he's with the green party so it's you know the, it's a green party branded thing but then just like one like one sentence slogans in these grinder ads the first one 
put Stephen Bates on top of this election. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, spice up Canberra with a third. <laughs> Number three, the best parliaments are hung. <laughs> Wow. And number four, you always come first with the greens. <laughs> Spelled the wrong way. Um, <laughs> wow, you can you can get away with that shit. Yeah, apparently so. Uh he won with fifty three point four percent of the vote. And um in an interview with radio station B one oh five on Sunday, Bates said his campaign was quote. 110% a motivator in my success. Wow. That, so, yeah, yeah. He said, as weird as it will sound to any gay person hearing this, it is a big place of community where a lot of people do come together. Anyway, it's, it's, it's pretty great. He, he's like a, a gay MP just got elected because, because of ads on Grinder, which that's, you know, that is one smart twink. That- <laughs> oh no, they're getting brains. Yeah, actually, he's kind of twonky. Oh, is he hot? He's handsome. Yeah. Okay. I mean, a handsome twonk is hot in my book. Okay. Well, then yes. Okay. And plus, he's Australian, so like, God damn, I think I <laughs> already came in my own ass. Okay. What? <laughs> Great. That's the news. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with you. Um, I would like to thank the following people that have come in our asses uh, monetarily. <laughs> <laughs> uh, w- w- thank you to, i'm so sorry that i just did that before saying now your names uh thank you to william ryan jackson Ooh, oscar award winner probably uh, uh, I, th- I thought didn't he murder uh, uh, garfield <laughs> garfield <laughs> <laughs> he assassinated president was, garfield is what i was oh, trying Prince, to say oh. but i think <laughs> <laughs> i just heard garfield and i was like that was my yeah. least favorite one of those it, it's not just what you heard it is what i said <laughs> oh, okay good good okay um sorry uh uh the second name uh jackson clark oh okay. William and jackson and jackson clark interesting clark gable is next I... oh oh that'd be fun no sorry mm-hmm. tristan ruined it uh tristan van tyne great what else wow. do you ruin, Tristan? Oh, God. <laughs> um, I mean... Kyle's hole? <laughs> I should be so lucky. God, what is... It's pride. Maybe that's... Um, <laughs> thank you to everyone who signs up for Patreon and supports us for some reason. Uh, you can go to patreon.com slash gayish podcast. Great. Uh, are you ready to talk about queer? Let's talk about queer. Okay. So this is going to be... Yeah, go ahead. Oh, well, I, I was going to say there, queer, there is a lot of discussion, like a, a lot of... There's a lot of baggage that comes with that word. A lot. There's a lot with this word that we need to talk about and get into and, and unpack. And also, I feel like we've kind of uh, given away the end result that we are going to get to because we named every episode this month queer mm-hmm. something i feel yeah, like yeah. we know where we're going to end up yeah that, <laughs> so that, that would be of, a weird move if we were like nobody should say this you word shouldn't do this at all <laughs> can't wait for our next episode about queer as folk like yeah, yeah we uh, i i don't know I'm, yeah, I, yeah the mystery sure. And, uh, but uh, yeah, I do wonder. Like, the, like there, there are people. There are people who definitely don't like that word, and I wonder if they're going to listen to this episode because it, it's it's a it's it's a good it's a good discussion, and I I think we're going to try to look at at both sides of it. Yeah. Also, everybody might remember "Have a Nice Gay," which was uh, the daily <laughs> show that we did uh, last year, and one of the recurring segments on there was LGBTQ. Let's get the best quotes, and I had a crap load of quotes that we didn't make episodes out of, and I have all of them that had the word queer in it so we can you know just sprinkle a little a little uh you know a little sprinkling of a, a dusting of some some quotes along a the little, way we'll hang uh, leftovers to sprinkle on top of your delicious new meal yep well so to to those to those people who don't like the word queer the first quote from 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 lgtbq from Zena Sharman. The book is The Remedy, Queer and Trans Voices on Health and Healthcare, wrote, quote, the surest way to get a bunch of queers to do anything is to make a rule nonsensically forbidding us from doing it. (laughs) (laughs) That's funny. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about the history of the word queer. So 
the the word itself has been around since uh, in English since the 16th century, and it originally meant strange, odd, peculiar, eccentric. It, you know, just all of these all of these connotations of being out of place or um, wrong in some way. And so it's not hard to draw that line to it being a pejorative about gender, sexuality, and relationship minorities. Yeah. I'm sure that, that that doesn't surprise anybody. Have you, are, do you remember places where queer is just used not to mean LGBT in some way, but is, is used in that others in that other way? Do you, are you familiar with it being used in its original sense? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I feel like every now and then someone says like very rarely, but someone, you know, very innocently will say that word meaning odd and it kind of takes you by surprise, <laughs> but you know, you, I, I get it. Cause I, understand context but yeah it is it's interesting when it pops up but yeah that's definitely like a connotation i know about yeah 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 um well so it, by the late 19th century so the, the the late 1800s uh queer was beginning to be about sexual deviance not specifically about gay stuff and gay wasn't really an identity then which is always a problem but it was used to refer to feminine men or men who were thought to have engaged in same-sex relationships it was also used to refer to other sexual, quote unquote, sexually deviant behaviors. Hmm. Um, and uh, an early recorded usage of that word, of the word in this sense, was in an 1894 letter by John Sholto Douglas, the ninth Marquess of Queensbury, which that's the gayest title you can have, I think. <laughs> Here's what I want to get to, Kyle. Okay. So we're in the process of doing this. Like we're trying to reclaim the word queer. That's not really that new. That kind of started um, in like the sixties, you know, the Stonewall and, and, and sort of, you know, let's take it back kind of a thing. Before that, there's this period of like queer is just super duper bad, especially post world war two. But there was a period before that, when queer was actually an identity, it was a word that was used and it was a subculture of hmm. gay men. So uh, in, in his book, Gay New York, George Chauncey oh. noted that the word queer was used as a within community identity by men who were stereotypically masculine. Oh, so the three big categories of dudes that were banging dudes were queer, fairy and trade. And those three things meant distinct things different from our modern sense about what those those represent uh so fairy is the is the one that's closest to to the the meaning that we have now of um just the the femme the femme stylish we get it yeah fairy. lispy limp-wristed you know and, and then <laughs> Uh, then, then queer though queer meant a dude that bangs dudes, but is mask. It's like the original mask for mask was huh. queer, and I, I think that's that's super interesting. And then and then trade, uh, trade referred to straight guys who would bang dudes. They were gay for pay. Well, gay for pay or or gay for getting off, right? Like mm, um, gay for ejaculate. I was trying to rhyme it. Uh, Chauncey, this author, said trade refers to straight men who would engage in same sex activity. And he says that trade are, quote, the normal men queers claimed to be. That's insulting everyone all the way around. Yeah. But boy, do I trust what Chauncey has to say about gay people. Yeah. I mean, I, mean, I, I have that book. I haven't read the whole thing, but it really it, it's super interesting because it talks about early, early, early gay culture in like New York, uh, especially in the 1890s. Um and uh, this 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 whole thing makes me want to read it again so I understand it. Read it again. Makes me want to read it so I understand it better. But queer, fairy, and trade, none of those, whether inside or outside of the subculture, uh, was the same as the word gay, right? Like, mm -hmm. like gay as an identity really didn't start until the 1930s and 1940s. And the, the word the word homosexual even, right, hadn't quite um taken off as as a thing because gay sex was a thing that you did not a thing that you were hmm. and then that changes that sh that shifts in 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 the 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 early to mid 20th century and now suddenly it's an identity 
And that's about the time that the word queer then both starts being used by society at large and in a in a super bad pejorative, it's the worst thing to be called kind of way. Yeah. Then that bad bullying word, um, it, it, it really, really stuck. And so, yeah, so much so that like when gay began to be the, the like more PC way to describe the thing that we are, a lot of gay men started, uh, and this was in the forties started, saying to those old that older generation that identified as queer fairy or trade stop using the word queer it's horrible hmm. and would we're, we're we're fighting with them then and the dudes that labeled themselves queer at the time were like i it's fine this, this is <laughs> this is my label for myself Wait, so, so they co they considered themselves queer and that was like not even in relation to anything gay it, like it, because gay didn't exist they just they called themselves queer the, the entire time and then gay people came up and had heard queer being used in a bad way and they were like oh uh, it's it's a bad thing stop calling yourself queer yes huh so now so now it's sort of doing the opposite right <laughs> like queer people are calling themselves queer again and gay people are like queer is a bad word stop using huh. it and um, it, it's just interesting how it's come has, how it's come sort of full circle there. It's interesting because there are other words that in general, I would tell like outsiders or straight people don't say the word, for example, transsexual. So rarely is that the word you, the current modern word that you mean to use, but there are some people that explicitly identify that way. And to, to, I don't know. That's very interesting that that there was a group of people that were like, "Hey, stop identifying the way you identify." I don't know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It, it, it's uh, it's interesting to me how people who are against the word queer being used think it's a slam dunk, mm. and it just it just isn't true. Like if if the if the premise is that that word is bad, has always been bad, should never be used, it's horrible and it's awful they they are incorrect. Yeah, but I I have not seen anyone say like it's never been used historically. I think uh, the people that I've and I um, I don't know, is this a good time to go into Yeah, people's? sure let's do it. Okay. Uh, what I've seen people say on why they don't w like that word is because their personal experience with that word. So, um sure. because I, you know, like I said, we're kind of suspected we or we we are both in the camp we use queer we have an entire month planned of queer uh topics uh i wanted to make sure i specifically pull quotes from people so that i'm representing uh those perspectives so uh, uh there was an npr article that went through and and talked about why um did you go get through your whole history sorry uh, did i stop you in I the think middle so. okay yeah y yeah it, yeah I, okay. yeah I, I said this early. I didn't go in chronological order, which is always a bad thing with history. Um, uh, yeah. Then we, we start trying to reclaim it in the 80s and 90s. And, and like yeah. uh, academia has been using the word queer for uh, like decades. And yeah, like that shit pisses me off. Why? I think that we have reached. Well, because I got in a fight with that one bitch about Shakespeare. <laughs> okay. Wait. <laughs> we contacted that pr that the, that there was a professor lady who wrote a book called Shakespeare. Yeah, and we reached out to her, and then I had a phone call with her, and she was basically like, "I don't support this at all. You can't make Shakespeare more queer. You can't make Shakespeare more queer than it already is because Shakespeare is queer." And 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 then digging into it, it's because she was using the word queer in like the academic sense, meaning just not mainstream, which. Uh, that bothers me because mm. I think, yeah, prescriptivism is dead and we've reached the point where like the word queer clearly means gay people now. <laughs> and the old sense of just meaning different, it, it is, um, it's insulting. Hmm. Hmm. Like the, like, like the, 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 the cis straight girl who just like likes to wear slippers on her head isn't queer. Don't tell me like, <laughs> I'm not like everybody else. Look how crazy I am. Exactly. Yeah. 
Anyway, go ahead. Sorry. Huh. I'm in a weird mood, Kyle. Yeah, me too. That's fine. Let's... I'm in a queer mood. Oh, um, <laughs> uh, you, uh, you just offended me. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I, I think it's interesting. It's just like, I don't know enough about academics to even have an opinion on what academics should label themselves as, or if I, I like, I don't have an opinion on that. So I like, can't even, but like, I know that academics has been using the word queer for, for decades do you, like do you think they should be changing the names of their like i don't know i don't think a non-gay person should be arguing with me a gay person about what the word queer means i would usually agree with you but if you're if you literally wrote a book on shakespeare and you are have if if you are like a professor in queer related studies you have direct and specific education on this topic like extensive knowledge on this topic i think she's fair to weigh in uh, uh with her opinion and i like i don't i wouldn't i wouldn't give that i would mostly agree with you in the except in the case where someone has done extensive studies in a topic or uh, yeah hmm? anyway <laughs> that's interesting uh okay so um there's an npr article that uh, I read that all uh, first two quotes come from, and they were talking about their use of the word queer. Now, as it has become more common to use the word queer, news outlets have to decide if they're using the word queer, how they are going to use it. Um, NPR uh, included a couple quotes that I'll read to you. Uh, quote, uh, these are the listeners that wrote into them, quote, I'm a gay man, and I did not spend my entire life being called queer as a slur. For journalists to accept it as reclaimed it isn't one of their the senior arts critic bob mondello at npr uh, had this say quote you have to understand i'm an old guy when i was growing up it was an insult and so for me as a gay man it was an awkward thing to use when it first started coming back it is not something that comes naturally to me the way that it would to a 20 year old. And for that reason, I'm careful with it. But I think that to some extent, the way that it is used in casual conversations by 20 year olds is going to matter more to the next 10 to the next 10 years than the way I use it. NPR talked about the standards that they use and, and, you know, did, you know, very NPR kind of, why do we do this? And, and they actually introduced me to something I didn't know about, which was uh, the, the nulg the which is the 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 nlgja which is the association of lgbtq journalists which none of that added up in any <laughs> kind of way but i assume it used to be like the national lesbian and gay journal association and then they updated or something anyway it is the association of LGBTQ journalists, and they have a style book on LGBTQ terminology that is intended to complement AP style books and and you know newsrooms own style books. And uh, this is what they say about queer: "quote originally a pejorative term for gay, now reclaimed by some LGBTQ people. Used with caution, still extremely offensive when used as an epithet." and still offensive to many LGBTQ people, regardless of intent. Its use may require explanation. Sometimes it is meant as an umbrella term synonymous with the abbreviation LGBT and its variations. However, some people who call themselves queer may do so because they find other labels inaccurate or restrictive, so the abbreviation LGBTQ includes them. And some straight people who identify with LGBTQ culture such as children of queer parents, call themselves culturally queer. Hmm. Thoughts, reactions, feelings? Do you, does that jive with your... Uh... I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I would agree. I would agree with that. Like, it, it's still entirely possible to use the word queer in a bad way, in a demeaning way, in an insulting way. And, and context matters, and tone matters, and delivery matters. And... Yeah. Um, I... Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think that's a very good... Like, yeah, if you're trying to provide journalists with understanding of how to how to use that word, that's a kind of good. Here's where we're at. But the last line kind of threw threw me for a loop. I don't never heard anyone call themselves culturally queer. And uh, that that I'd be like, I yeah, that gives me those vibes like you were saying of like, 
uh, someone wears pink and orange polka dots and they're like, I'm so fucking queer. And you're like, okay. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Another article that uh, was arguing against the use of queer as, you know, represent like replacement basically for LGBT. Brian uh, 23 said, I've seen many people on the internet claiming that it's been reclaimed, but in real life, I've heard the word many times and exclusively in a hateful context. I, and just about every non-heterosexual person I know, has been called that and absolutely not in a respectful way. I'm not sure how or why some people believe it's been completely taken back, but in my experiences of having it yelled at me in school when I was seen hugging another boy, it's just as derogatory and homophobic as it ever was. Yvette, age 19, said, The Q slur is a severe trigger for me, and because of that, I don't have access to resources I desperately need. I'll never be able to take a gender and sexualities studies class, even though I'd really like to otherwise. I tried to sign up for an LGBT mentorship program, and the first email they sent called me the Q slur. They think it's inclusive, but I feel it's inherently the opposite. (laughs) What? Yeah. Okay, here comes the hate mail, Kyle. Just type for Pride Month. I don't think that that is a justification for stopping the movement to reclaim the word queer, but rather that is an indication that that person needs to go to therapy for trauma. Like, I'm sorry that bad things happen to people, and maybe it's not about you. <laughs> maybe maybe the word and how it's used is important for the movement and makes important changes to society and uh like i, I yeah but, okay i i understand triggers and that just it, i i don't know what to do with that yeah uh, if if you have trauma response especially to a word that exists so commonly and if it's enough that you can't take classes or read emails with that word that's a lot that there's definitely something that needs discussing and support and and therapy through i would say that i mean uh, i absolutely as someone who absolutely needs therapy for lots of reasons like i i feel great telling (laughs) everyone needs therapy for every reason always all the time and this is a great example of a good time that someone needs therapy also that doesn't change your immediate response like that doesn't fix that response to you right now and it's totally valid for people to be be able to talk about not here's where the movement's going or where I view history or how I think it's like, it's totally fair for, for people to say, here's my reaction to that word. I don't like this word personally. And here's my reaction to it. Like I, I think uh, to try to force everyone to say, think outside yourself. And like, sometimes you're like, I, I'm just trying to get through this. No, I'm allowed to think about myself in this moment. And I'm allowed to share how I feel about this thing in this moment. I don't think they're going to change the overall movement or, or anything, but also I think it's important to like, listen to the people that are expressing what their experiences are with this word and, and agree or disagree. I think it's important to hear all of it out. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I think I also think you, you may be a t- the, the kind of person that can look at the history or the movement or, or use some of that information to help inform and that that's kind of can guide or sway you, but that's not everyone. Not everyone is, is going to use history to guide them. We're going to use etymology or going to use, you know, I don't know. There, there's yeah, sure. No, I, 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 I agree with that. I agree with that. A uh, last article uh, that I'm going to get uh, two quotes from uh, is the uh, gay times. Uh, and, uh, it was interesting. Most of the article was uh, people vocalizing support for queer. So this was one of the, I pulled the, one of the rare exceptions. Uh, Sharon D. Clark, who is a famous actor, said, I will always classify myself as gay as opposed to queer. I think that is because of growing up in a generation where queer was such a derogatory word. I'm not someone who likes to link myself with what I see as a negative word and when there are other choices that I can make. I don't really feel that I need to reclaim what I feel is a derogatory word and make it positive when there are already words that I associate positively with something. I personally won't use queer because the minute I say it, all my vibrations go back to what queer meant and I'd rather not have that vibration in my life. Define yourself however you want to define yourself. That's just not my choice. Gay, lesbian, bi, whatever, but just not queer for me. I would reject the premise that there is another option. 
that there is no other contender for a single mm. unified word that means all of the gender, sexuality, relationship minorities. Well, you did just say uh, G GSRM is kind of the other big label, but I, I agree with you. That's no one uses that or like not in a widespread. Did did uh, did she say there was another option? What did she say that made you made you think that? I don't know. That's that's what I what I heard. Like, I re she didn't want to use the word queer because there are so many other options. Oh, I uh, other... like you can label yourself with a lot of different words. There are a lot of different words that you can call yourself. Yes, none of which have a unifying balloon overarching. The whole tent, Kyle. The whole tent. That's yeah. I don't know. yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's the downside of all the different words that we have to call ourselves. Is how do you unify them um or or how do we unify ourselves um yeah i agree uh the last one which i really liked which is from a friend of the show because she was on once jinx monsoon uh who's uh yeah. currently man I, even i have seen them on uh, uh rupaul's drag race because people just posting about them and and all kinds of good shit they're doing there, Judy Garland was fucking incredible. Boy, if I had seen what they were referencing, I'm sure I would have loved it. But I yeah, mm. Every, everyone loved that. The Judy it was Garland, yeah, fucking amazing. Uh, uh, there, there was a longer uh, quote that was all really great, but I uh, to boil it down, uh, I think to strengthen our community, we must move forward with compassion and empathy towards one and other. Uh, both of both those who use the word for empowerment and those who have a negative history with the word. We must look at the context and the person using the word and give each other the benefit of the doubt, while at the same time making sure we aren't using the word flippantly when speaking to outsiders who don't have the same history with the word, good or bad. Hmm. Uh, so so Jinx in general seemed positive, like would use the word, uh, but I, I really enjoyed their who's saying it. Why are they saying it? What's the context? Uh, you know, being thoughtful. I, I really appreciated that. And I think um, it's interesting as someone who uses the word and supports its use that I'm, that I'm pulling this. I'm trying to channel the, uh, well, I don't know. I am just exist in a constant state of empathy. It's really fucking annoying, but I'm trying to channel like when I read these, um, these, uh, kind of opinions and, and people explaining why they don't like it. I, uh, it, it just makes me, it reminds me that I want to be more cognizant when I do use the word and use it with intention. Um, and, um, boy, if you're straight, I, I, if I wouldn't want to weigh in, I wouldn't want to like get myself, I would not use the word queer. I would probably stick to LGBT, but, um, yeah, I think I think it is good to remember that it is not, you know, people have shitty associations with that. And that's not our fault. And the movement seems to be going towards reclaiming the word that those are all the but also some people don't don't like it and don't want to be called it. And it shouldn't. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think one one thing that is interesting about Jinx's comment there that I totally agree with is to, to be sure to validate the bad feelings that people have about the word. I think the hardest thing to do though, is to hold that and still use the word anyway, because I think mm. it's important to, <laughs> um, that is a, that is a tough task to, to do both things like honor to, to hold that person's discomfort and then do it anyway. I, I think is 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 hard and uncomfortable. So then, like when faced with that discomfort, there's a tendency to just make a like a, a hard ass. I'm going to do it. Fuck you, which is exactly <laughs> what I did, you know, four or five minutes ago, right? And so I, I think that's a that's a it's a it's a really good point that's worth remembering that those people have bad feelings, and and I want I want to care about those bad feelings. And I think uh, other people have been called that word too and have bad feelings about it and we all don't have to uh, i think there's a lot of value in reclaiming it that that can help um but also not everyone has to have the same like 
we don't have to fight about who got called this name the most or who, you know, who has the most, like we all can have kind of different paths of how we deal with that. And these are the kind of conversations that I think are important for us to have. And also I think suck if, um, straight people pick up on some of these things. It's like, this isn't a conversation for you to have. And also like, I could very easily see this conversation being used against us or I don't know, like we're allowed to have debate and dialogue and discussion and, and figure these things out together, but it's not for other people to weigh in on. And it's not, it doesn't mean that we're just, I don't know that we're fighting. It doesn't mean that we're not organized. It doesn't mean that we're not unified. It doesn't mean that we don't support and care about everyone in the community, you know? Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I have an LGTBQ that I think is good Ooh, okay. for r- right now. This one's by Eve Sedwick. Quote, that's one of the things that queer can refer to. The open mesh of possibilities, gaps, overlaps, dissonances and resonances, lapses and excesses of meaning when the constituent elements of anyone's gender, of anyone's sexuality aren't made or can't be made to signify monolithically. The experimental linguistic, epistemological, representational, political adventures attaching to the very many of us who may at times be moved to describe ourselves as, among many other possibilities, pushy femmes, radical fairies, fantasists, drags, clones, leather folk, ladies in tuxedos, feminist women or feminist men, masturbators, bulldaggers, divas, Snap queens, butch bottoms, storytellers, transsexuals, aunties, wannabes, lesbian identified men or lesbians who sleep with men or dot, dot, dot. People able to relish, learn from or identify with such. I want that like a painting instead of The Last Supper. I want want every one of those identities painted and them all hanging out at dinner. That's who I want to have dinner with. Yeah. Me too. Boy, it's like we planned this. That dovetails very nicely into there are people who explicitly identify as queer. Uh, we we are, I guess, something that we could have also clarified about queer is there is both. I think uh, mostly when when we talk about it, we talk about it being used as an umbrella term, uh, you know, potentially in replacement um, or as a synonym for LGBT or LGBTQ, like queer as the queer community. But queer is also an identity, and those are related but different things. Uh, So I – well, first of all, when I was looking up Gata, uh, which I guess I have to call Queerda for this one, but that doesn't make any sense. But (laughs) when has that stopped me before? Um, I was trying to find if there had been any kind of survey or numbers on – do how many people are in support of the word queer to represent our community? Like I, I wish we could quantify this a little bit more. And I don't know. I think that'd be interesting. Mm -hmm. I did not find anything. So if anyone out there has, has seen numbers on how many people in the LGBT community support or don't support the word queer, let me know. Anyway, till then, we are going to talk about people that identify as queer. This is a study called Exploring the Q and LGBTQ Demographic Characteristics Sexuality of Queer People in a U.S. Representative Sample of Sexual Minorities by Shoshana K. Goldberg, Esther D. Rothblum, Stephen T. Russell, and Ilian H. Meyer in 2019. Ooh, recent. Yeah. And that's probably the most, like, correct I've said every word in this portion of the, the broadcast. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, doesn't mean I did it great. It just means it was better than most. Okay, Mike, don't even think just the first number that pops in your head. How many people identify as queer percentage? 14. Great. (laughs) I have to, I have to force you to play the game the way I want you to play it. Okay. (laughs) Thinking, taking a little bit more. Do you think 14% of, uh, well, no, I, 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 my, my brain in my panic to follow your stupid ass rules, like I was thinking like what percentage of LGBTQIA plus people are identify as queer. So, oh, that is that is what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, as opposed to like of all humans, which I would say would be like 0.2% or <laughs> right, something. Yeah, right? no, like, yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. How many LGBTQ people? So you so you answer. 14. Yeah, no, it, uh, it is less than that. Um, uh, when people are asked to identify 
lesbian, gay, bi, other, uh, or queer, uh, 5.8% identified as queer. Hmm. Okay. Who are, who, who are these queers? <laughs> uh, the study said verbatimly, um, the, 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 the People that are queer, this study found that they are uh, younger than other groups. There's this interesting, uh, they, they tended to, th- their average age was uh, 26, hmm. w- which was younger than, than you know, lesbian, gay, bi, other. Uh, there's this interest, you're, you're thinking, you're doing thinking face. How many of them were left-handed? <laughs> It's, 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 it's trendy. Left handed is so trendy. It's so in, um, isn't, isn't that the argument though, that people are going to make that like, it's because it's a mm. fad now, like that, that's, that, that's the, the reason that it's, it's a younger person's word. That's that, a, Yeah. Like some of the things that I've heard about why it's a younger thing is that, you know, potentially younger people have to get called that name less, get bullied less. Uh, it's more likely to be reclaimed or yes, yeah, think, think some people thinking that it is a newer word we're using for ourselves. Even, I don't know. Yeah. Some of those arguments like you talked about in, in history. I mean, I didn't know about the ones all the way back, but yeah, is or even as early as Stonewall, we were using the word queer for ourselves. So some of those, yeah. Anyway, yes. And, but like, it's different from when I learn about asexuality or, intersex or two spirit or like it's different than those identities in my mind because there's something that is more intentionally like undefinable about it uh and that's part of the purpose of the word there i don't know yeah Mm. not that i'm not trying to say it's a trend but it is uh, it's more acceptable now to label yourself as that and uh, yeah unless you go back to like your times they were saying like the 1800s like it's just now a thing that people are even doing yeah yeah did i make sense in all my things that i said <laughs> i think so yeah 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 for sure it's uh it's uh so one one thing that's interesting is that queer as an identity i'm not exactly sure what it means and then that makes me struggle with how to accept it hmm. or, or or how to, uh, you know, because I don't really understand what it m- means. If somebody uses that for themselves, I then still don't know what it means. And so, <laughs> like, it, it 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 makes it it makes it intangible and amorphous. And and I I then you know sort of struggle to get it when all of those other things that you mentioned, I kind of I like like maybe not a hundred percent, but I understand what they are and and can sort of wrap my head around it and what that person's experience might be like based on what i understand about the identity but 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 clear Um, clear i don't you said something really that i wanted really specific you said it it makes me struggle to accept it the word accept yeah very loaded word that you use then do you do you mean actually accept what, yeah what do you mean by that yeah on, on an emotional level i think that's true like a, 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 a visceral level or, or something like um I, I i would say like if somebody says oh i'm trans then without even having to think about it i'm just like okay i get it <laughs> like i i know what's going on and i accept that that's that's that person's truth or whatever and because i don't know what queer means I have to do some like I have to work on myself to like like maybe accepts the wrong word. I don't know. It's a it's a good I'm glad you're pushing on this because it's making me uncomfortable and I like that. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's just like <laughs> Yeah, th- there's a difference between like let's talk honestly about how we feel about shit and I know that you're not gonna run around and like I don't know. Th- this is this is hopefully people know by now this is a place where we can be honest about good bad and the ugly uh and coming from a place of helping us learn about the community and understand your something that's really important and i think that we try to teach to straight people is your understanding of a term should not inform your ability to accept it um uh, there's a viral tweet that uh, i always see pop up like i don't understand korean but i know it's a real language um uh, so so that's why like acceptance to me it, it was a very 
yeah, important word that you said that I like surprised me, I guess. Yeah. And uh, yeah, like acceptance to me seems like implies some sort of like comfort with it or something. And, and I, I would, I would never fight against a person's right to use that word for their experience. People, you know, I, I would use that word when, when referring to them, if there was a reason to, uh, uh, it's, it's just, I, I have to, I have to work on n- not being uncomfortable hmm. or something. I, what, I, I don't know. Yeah. What w- can you get into like what part about it makes you feel uncomfortable? Like what's the discomfort in someone saying, hi, my name is whatever. I'm queer. It's what does that mean? Like it's, it's my desire to like understand people and, and, and be able to anchor myself in, even if it's not true for me, what might be true for them. And I, I, it doesn't, it doesn't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what it means. I don't, I just don't know what it means. So then I fear that they're just using that word and like, and then I have to wrestle myself into like not leaning into that feeling and, and saying, you know, don't fuck this up, Mike, don't say the stupid thing. Like, and don't say they can't say that about themselves and don't like dig into it too deeply and be an asshole. Just like, (laughs) great. I don't have to understand it, but I very much want to, and I I don't. (laughs) uh, Queer is a gender and sexuality that doesn't fit to the norm. And it's, it's, I think it's a great comparison. Like if someone says trans, uh, I'm surprisingly going to make the opposite case than you just tried to make. If someone says they're trans, there are a lot of things that could mean there's there's within the trans umbrella. There are so many different experiences, like for you to hear the word trans and think that, you know what that means and what like to, to hear that word and just know like that. I don't think that's the case at all. I think you've just heard the word trans, like people say, hi, I'm trans more often than you've heard someone say, hi, I'm queer. Like, I think that's just about frequency or something rather than actually knowing what trans means to a person. If that's all you know about them. That's an interesting point. Yeah. I'm with you on that. To me, when 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 a person says that, what that word means is that like whatever label their mom and dad gave them boy or girl, he or she is not, what's true for that person at least, or like not all the time anyway. And that, that I can get my head around. Let me, I mean, I did start to like try to define it myself without. Um... Okay. The, the glad uh, definition in their media kit uh, is an adjective used by some people, particularly younger people whose sexual orientation is not exclusively heterosexual. Uh, typically for those who identify as queer, the term lesbian, gay, and bisexual are perceived to be too limiting and or fraught with cultural connotations they feel do not apply to them. And again, like the, um, the other organization, they said, once considered a pejorative term, queer has been be- reclaimed by some LGBTQ people to describe themselves. Uh, it's not universally accepted. Use caution when using blah, 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 blah. Um, yeah, so queer, I think is a, uh, well, not, I think glad says that queer is someone who does not identify as heterosexual and the existing labels are for some reason don't fit right with them. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll work on it. (laughs) I mean, what more do you want to know? Like, do you want to know, do you want to be like, who do you fuck? Like, who do you date? Like wh- what's, what's in your pants? Like what, what more information helps you? <laughs> what do you want to, yeah. What do you want to know from them that you don't? I guess any or all of those things that you just said, like, uh, um, there's a story there. Please tell it to me <laughs> or, or something. I don't know. I, I wonder if like, I don't know if, if you're in the right context, like, Oh, I'm queer. Oh, that's awesome. I'm, in the LGBT community myself. Like what does, what does queer mean to you? Or like if you're on an app, yeah. like, okay, Hey, BT dubs, I'm a dude. Do you date or hook up with dudes? That's important for me to know so that I can decide if like we should continue trying to like fuck or not, like, you know, or I won't consider trying to like pursue yeah. you or not. Like I think there's some, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. 
uh, study. They have higher uh, levels of educational attainment Hmm. and uh, less than 10% of queer respondents were living in poverty, uh, fewer than all other groups. That's interesting. Queer people tended to be mostly uh, either women or assigned female at birth. Um, Over a third were, uh, and I'd never seen this abbreviation, uh, GQNB, gender queer non-binary. I've never, I've, I've not seen those two lumped together as the blanket term for someone who is not male or female. So that's interesting. Anyway, um, so over a third were gender queer non-binary. Ten uh, percent were cisgender men. You know, uh, to back up a little bit, when you were talking about um, uh, the money stuff, it made me wonder if that it means that they're also more white. There is uh, definitely a part of this that younger, higher education less poverty there uh, you know is there and I, the the study even made some of these uh, you know like all studies kind of here's some of our guests are what needs more exploration like is this something academics uses the word queer is it something that people l- learn from academics is there an education you know activists have used the word queer maybe there's some level of of that maybe there's some level of education are you moving away from home so you're um, either in a more liberal city or more able to uh get away from your home area and that makes you more likely like being able Mm. to step outside of your home environment uh yeah there there are a lot of theories on what that could mean but i want to say this was the they said that they were the first one 2019 like the first one that actually studied this as an identity oh god i just turned the page and there's my definition of the word fag just in case we needed that um (laughs) great (laughs) but um there, there are i think something that's interesting to keep in mind as we talk about using the 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 word queer for our community is there also separately a group of people that identify themselves as queer so uh, the golden rule is you know always uh, use name pronoun identity kind of indicators that the person says so uh, some people that may be explicitly not saying queer because they don't call themselves that and don't like that word for other people maybe that is how they identify so using that word yeah yep yeah for sure also yeah, we, I mentioned genderqueer, but yeah, that is also a, a separate category that that is not something uh, I explored more, have stats on. But um, yeah, there are a couple different ways to be to be queer. That leads kind of nicely into talking about like I use the word queer for myself sometimes. Ooh, I have an LGBTQ real quick. How about that? Yeah, and then and then and then and then we'll we'll, we'll talk about our our stuff because I I think this this uh, this speaks to personal experience too at least it does for me uh the author sean kennedy in the book tigers and devils quote and i know when you're a teenager everybody feels different and alien to the other people around them but there seems to be an added dimension when you're queer it's because for that period of time you're more isolated than anybody else and you truly think you are the only one of your kind so you create fantastic barriers and defense strategies for yourself to survive and when you get older and realize that you can take them down It's an internal and eternal struggle to do so. Fear is the best anti-motivator in the world. It's very interesting to me that you brought these quotes that talk about queer and you were talking about this, the history of people using the word queer and maybe even a little bit of a pushback of people that don't want to use the word queer. And then when we got to the identity of queer, I just, I would expect all those things to be in a, uh, in a line. And so that, sure. that surprised me and threw me off about like not understanding or maybe even emotionally accepting, even though I know you would be accepting but of the, of the yeah. descriptor or the identity of queer. Yeah. Would you, so I, have you ever, or would you ever call yourself queer as an identity? Yes. What? Absolutely. Wait, you, and wait. but no, but <laughs> but no, 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 but, no, but, no, but wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. So 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 I I th- I think that that it is it is an overloaded term, right? Which was uh, at least my takeaway from your last segment was that 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 was the point of that segment that there is the word queer meant to be an all encompassing 
non-specific way to talk about all gender relationship to sexuality minorities. And in that sense, I would absolutely say I am a queer person. I am queer. And I'm comfortable doing that and saying that and do it a lot. In fact, I'm doing all of these talks and all of these all the fucking traveling that I'm doing for work right now includes a discussion on queer issues. And I use the word queer when I give those talks to describe myself, to describe the community, etc. There's the other meaning of that word, which is just the identity of I am queer and nothing else. That doesn't mean anything else. There's no other like like don't don't slice up the tent and tell me what part of it i'm in i'm 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 queer and that's that's all you get and and it, it's it's that one that i struggle so queer with. plus so, another word makes sense to you yes okay anyway you were you were telling me that you're queer so <laughs> I, and i, I accept I, that kyle <laughs> i feel personally attacked no um but well but i tend to uh i use both um, so I, I'm one of the, <laughs> I'm one of your safe ones. Um, I use gay, I use queer, mm-hmm. um, man, no, I'm just still like, refl- I wish I had a, uh, I don't know. Yeah. There are some people that don't want to put a label on their identity. There's some people that are, uh, just call themselves queer because uh, I think, I think a commonality that I've seen is a lot of people don't feel represented by any of the big letters and feel and that I, I get, okay let me talk about me and what why i use queer and even though it's in conjunction with gay um often um i remember like in my maybe mid 20s when someone said to me like oh you're queer right and i was like oh yeah I, but i i say gay or something where i like actively said not that word Um, so it was only like mid to late twenties that I even then started using that word. And it is, it's directly because of, I don't know. It always comes back to this fucking podcast. Like (laughs) a lot of the things we talk about in this podcast, I think as I participated in the, in the arts more, as I went to gay places and often felt so uncomfortable because of all the different standards and ideals and interests that I didn't hold. It's because as I understood and realized and had like the severity of depression and feeling completely unconnected with gay experiences that way, or having this like unique different challenge that was I don't know, related to being gay, but a whole separate thing. And that making me not feel totally connected Mm -hmm. as I, as I learned more about gay and queer history, like all of those things contributed to me, like starting to actually use and identify with that word. Do you think you mentioned before your early twenties or mid twenties, I forget what you said before that you had, you had a negative connotation with that word. Um, not that I had a negative connotation i just some if someone said queer like oh you like that's how you identify i would correct them and say no identify as gay uh, like so so mm-hmm. i don't know it, it wasn't that i was like you just insulted my life and my family and i will spit on your grave it, it was just like no that's not that's not it it's this it's interesting i think it's just it's just shifting and and anytime language shifts it's weird and uncomfortable and some people get on board faster than others and it's a it's a mess language is messy and that's this is this is messy too um i i think something that like since it is the there there's a political part of it for a lot of people too and like we talked about like the the use of the word queer as the community and to represent us that can be something that instead of, oh, I've met a gay person, I'm cool, but like trans people, I don't know any trans people. If if we're all queer, oh, I've met another queer person, that there's a unifying, I think, kind of crossing some of those boundaries and hopefully helpful thing that that does uh, to mm-hmm. show people that things that are outside the norm and outside the boundaries, like we... We are, even though we don't have identical orientations or, or experiences of gender or like, you know, any of those possibilities, like we are unified and 
uh, yeah, uh, hopefully, you know, that so often it's like knowing one gay person is the thing that, that changes your mind. So like knowing one queer person, hopefully that can help. And hopefully that helps other identities that are, that are not, you know, other gay men. Yeah. Did we do it? Is that what, is that what we are? <laughs> um, did you have anything more about like your, your personal? I think, yeah, I don't know that I have given enough space to the experience of people who were tortured by the, that word mm. because I'm very privileged in my ability to pass as straight. Like I, I, um, I hate the mask for mask <laughs> bullshit, but like I, I was believably in the closet. I was believably straight for the first 30 years of my life and, and, and married and all, all of that. So in a, in a homophobic way, I don't think that I was ever repeatedly the target, right? Like the, 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 the kid who comes out in high school and, and get or in the nineties who came out in high school, who got called that on the playground every single day, that was not my experience. So it's, a, it's a lot easier for me to then discount it and say, it, it doesn't matter. Yeah. We should all be yeah. queer. And, um, I'm, I, I haven't done a very good job of giving that space. I, I agree for myself as well. I, I totally agree. Um, uh, what I will say, I appreciate, but appreciate about you, even in this conversation that we had about people that identify as queer is uh, like, I, I get, I, I said this a little bit, but like what you will do is this makes me feel uncomfortable, but I will absolutely, but if someone identifies as queer, you will support them. You're not going to like, this is not a conversation you're going to have with some rando. You, you're, you're like, you will support uh, someone who is queer. You are, it's like, you're almost preemptively on board because you know, it's the right thing to do. And, um, and you're being honest about the emotional kind of piece. That's a hang up. And I wish more people were emotionally, or is, you know, for some intangible reason, uncomfortable with something, but still knew logically what the right decision is, could look around and say, everyone deserves rights. Everyone's equal. I'm going to work. I'm going to think more about this thing that makes me uncomfortable. That's not their problem. And I don't know. That's something that I'm going to think about. Like, I wish more people could do that. And I think too many people, their emotion just turns around and says, now that's now that's the right answer. So like that thing that you're doing, it's uncomfortable to express, especially to LGBT uh, on an LGBT podcast to an LGBT audience. Yeah, to yes. Tens of listeners <laughs> But uh, to express that is a very uncomfortable thing. But also uh, just like we need to let people like you said, like give space and voice to people that are uncomfortable with using the word queer. Like we're let's give them space. You are, uh, you deserve and are okay to have the feelings and reactions that you have. You're not allowed to take away someone's rights based on you're not allowed to attack anyone based on you're not like there are a lot of things you're not allowed to do, but you're allowed to have the visceral emotional reaction. And in certain contexts, you're allowed to share that and talk through it. And hopefully that can be helpful in this context to not only you, but other people who have that same kind of feeling and don't know what to do with and don't feel like they're allowed to say anything to anyone or don't have these kind of avenues of bringing up these conversations because it's not always the right time or place to yeah. bring it up. So I appreciate you doing that. Thank you. I, I appreciate you keeping me honest. I really do. I, I, I forget at what point in the conversation I, I, I meant it. Thank mm. you for, for, for pushing. Cause uh, it's, it's, it's uncomfortable and I like it. Like <laughs> <laughs> daddy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? Okay, Mike. Um, on the, yeah. Okay. On that note, we have talked as much about queer as, as, these two dudes can today yep um i my 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 last my last lgtbq then are you ready oh, okay great let's do it yeah. here we go this is this is from uh uh the casebook of sherlock holmes by <laughs> arthur conan doyle great it, it, it's 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 in the old sense of the word queer but i think is perfect anyway using either sense quote when a man does a queer thing or two queer things there may be a meaning to it 
But when everything he does is queer, then you begin to wonder. <laughs> <laughs> okay. One, that's amazing. Two, can we do Halloween costumes that are queer thing one and queer thing two? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. <laughs> um. All right. Well, yeah. Do, oh, on the Patreon segment, uh, we're going to share more LGBT, LGBTQs. Yep. And I'm going to tell you the uh, the style guides on the words dyke and fag. Nice. <laughs> Excellent. I'm excited about this. Yeah, me too. Okay, uh, so do you, do you want to take a break? Let's take a queer break. Let's take a queer break. <laughs> queer break. Break. This is the part where Mike and Kyle take a break. Are we back? We're back. We're back. We just had a robust discussion about about uh, 15 different things on our Patreon segment. Yeah. It was a... <laughs> was it was fun. a... It was a cornucopia of <laughs> queer shit um we're gonna do our gays and straightest we're gonna do our gays and straightest but first please do not forget that for pride month we on thursday june the 23rd at 6 p.m pacific are having a happy hour come join us it's gonna be fun also, uh, we every topic this month is queer, but one of those, the Patreon members uh, th- at our Gap Bridger level, get to vote and decide that. You have until tomorrow or dep- until Friday to vote on that and the tiebreaker vote. Five dollars and up, go vote too, just in case it's tied. So one of these queer topics you will get to choose. So go choose. Go choose. Um, okay, our website is gayishpodcast.com. We are on all social media, minus a, one notable video platform, at Gayish Podcast. Our hotline, you can send us text messages or leave us voicemails, is 5855-GAYISH. That's 585-542-9474. Standard rate supply. Oh, variation. Our email is gayishpodcast at gmail.com. Our physical mailing address is Post Office Box 19882, Seattle, Washington, 98109. Um, I am now going to do my local gay bar review because I said as long as I've been traveling all over the fucking planet, I'm going to try to go to at least one gay bar in all these random ass places and report back. This time, I'm going to review the Abbey in West Hollywood, California, which is uh, one of the places that we allegedly ended up after the Cybersocket (laughs) Awards. Um. (laughs) So every other time that I've been to the Abbey in the past, because when, when I worked for IMDb.com, uh, they had offices in Santa Monica and I would go into West Hollywood and and I, I would go to the Abbey. It's It seems like it's changed since then. Like I remember it being a very uh, like n- just nothing but go-go boys in there. And um, granted, we were there on a Tuesday. You and I were there on a Tuesday. So maybe that's why there weren't as many glistening go-go boys. But <laughs> um, uh, yeah, the, the Abbey is a, a, a big place, a big dance floor. And at least on the night that we were there, it was it was a pretty um, uh, interesting crowd, younger crowd. But um, y- it was, uh, I don't know, like I find West Hollywood really intimidating. And I know that you do, too. But but uh, it, it wasn't it wasn't that bad. Like it was. It was fun. I enjoyed it there. I had a great time. Would go back. Yay, the Abbey. <laughs> Yay. Um. Uh, yeah, I, I I enjoyed it. Time for Gaius Estratus? Yeah, let's do Sponsored it. Sponsored by Spaces. Spaces, a new group chat app for niche queer communities by Hornet. Queer communities by oh. Hornet. <laughs> o- only. <laughs> you have to only identify as queer. At, no, no, no. You're right, no. yeah. Uh, I will go. So, uh, my, we, <laughs> we talked way more about our experience at the, uh, cyber socket awards on the last bonus Patreon, uh, episode. So I will, the one about uh, poop, the one about poop, uh, <laughs> in the, in the personal news section before we, before we get to the real shit, we get to some, <laughs> some good shit. Um, <laughs> And uh, my gayest is uh, waking up in a hotel and uh, having a hangover and collecting all my belongings on the floor, like a skirt uh, Mm -hmm. thrown aside and shoes asunder. And I apparently had taken off my makeup uh, that night. So that was smart of me. Um, Yeah. Yeah. 
my straightest is we got to meet uh, the host of the Cybersack Awards, uh, where it was Pandora Box, yeah. um, and uh, she was great. She was hilarious. We got to meet her. Uh, I took a picture, which is on our Instagram. But when I went to take a picture of us, we don't, we don't, we're not like selfies. Like clearly, we're not Instagram people that know, you know, they're people that know how to do this shit. Uh, when I went to take the picture, she like moved my hand like she moved it into the place it should be <laughs> so that it was a good picture like yeah. she she had to she had to do the like selfie kind of like that's what gays are supposed to just know how to do um yeah thanks yeah. neither neither of us know anything <laughs> good job. Well, yeah no I'm, I'm i stand by that but um what about you uh well so the gayest thing about me this week i've been traveling after i got through the uh through security on my way home this weekend uh i'm like what in the hell is that noise and then i realize oh my pants are singing i take my phone out and it's lady gaga at full volume <laughs> on the edge of edge of glory just like my my they just started playing so but just, i had that moment of just like am i that gay that lady gaga just comes out of my ass like it, it was great <laughs> real gays though yeah <laughs> uh, and the straightest thing about me this week is having a gun in my house what um, yeah my my dad came over and we were traveling together and he parked down in my parking garage and he said uh but per usual that he had his gun with him i'm like well you definitely should not leave that in the car in the garage oh. that gets broken into from time to time you sh you should do so he brought it upstairs and we locked it in a little box that i have here in the studio but like yeah the straightest thing about me is like having a gun in my home which i don't know if that's straight or not. that's straight yes yeah I, I stand by that that's straight that scares the shit out of me me too me God. too nobody died yet um okay well that's 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 it oh wait mom's planning is out if you want to hear the first episode of Mom's Planning, we offered it to everybody for free, which you can get by going to patreon.com slash gayishpodcast and finding the post. Uh, and regard you don't even have to sign in. You can just listen to it there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We uh, posted it first for Patreon so they could get the, the early access and their exclusive little benefits. But yeah, everyone go uh, take a listen. And in the future, we'll have uh, monthly Mom's Planning episodes. Yep. Um, well, thank you to Spaces for sponsoring us. You can find and download Spaces on your iOS device by searching for Queer Spaces or Hornet. Hornet, like the thing that flies around like a wasp kind of thing. Hornet Spaces. Uh, we have one of the biggest spaces on there. Thanks to y'all. So I appreciate y'all going there. Um, so I'm in there. So come in and chat and hang out. Yeah. And, and thanks to Queers Everywhere. You know what? Uh, thanks to the podcast query <laughs> sure because you know why not um thanks, thanks to queries thanks uh, yeah have they touched you in a meaningful way only sequel <laughs> um great i to get us out of this thank you to our super gap bridgers Yo Stossel. Mm -hmm. Hello. Harry Shaw. Hi. Uh, Josh Copeland, Forrest Nell, Patrick Martin, Nanonymous, uh, James Barrow, Steve Lug Douglas, <laughs> Explosive Lasagna, Christopher Farrell, Just Jamie. Just Jamie. Who are you, Just Jamie? Uh, Kevin <laughs> Henderson, Tipsy McStumbles, Donald Lisky, Thomas B, Dusty Sands, A.E. Coleman, Chris Catchatorian, Jerome York, and Cian and Javi. That's it. This has been Gayish from the Chris Catchatory Studios. I'm Mike Johnson. I'm Kyle Getz. Until next week, be butch, be fabulous, be you. Happy Pride. Happy Pride. Woo. Happy Pride! Whee. Get drunk. Do drugs. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. <laughs> Fuck a stranger. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm back. <laughs>